te kanyahora um, te tai eriri. Uh, um, uh, myself, uh, Trevor James, and um, uh, Alistair Stevens are going to talk about uh, our stream corridors, uh, our awa, that um, are the link between um, a lot of these projects and I think a critical uh, re restoration opportunity. <clears throat> Uh, every year our waterways get uh, modified by more impervious surface, uh, more contaminant input from a, a variety of, of sources, um, more rock lining uh, um, and a ho whole host of other modifications. Um, some of them, uh, on the other hand, some of these interventions have been uh, really positive. But my um, thesis today is, are we taking the opportunities that we should be taking, or are we spacing out? Um, or, um, turning that around, are we giving them space? And more on that as we go. These photos are all from um, Richmond, so I am Richmond focused, apart from one slide at St. Arnold. Um, but a lot of these things I know are happening um, here in Nelson. <clears throat> So we are, um, we are moving from this side, where uh, concrete lined channels and very straightened waterways, we are moving to much more of the natural channel designs. And I must say, um, we have got a, a really big step forward for Nelson and Tasman, a joint policy called the Land Development Manual. And while it's called the Land Development Manual, it does talk about water quite a lot. Um, there's a whole chapter on stormwater and stream design. And um, in there, there's um, a concept uh, called water sensitive design that um, I think is, um, is a huge step forward. And some of the um, implementation plans that come from that uh, are using the word biomimicry, which I think is a very powerful word. You know, to to design our stream corridors that mimic nature from an ecological point of view as well as a uh, fluvial um, sort of geomorphological point of view. <clears throat> so my talk today is about uh, the aquatic ecology, that's my area of work, but um, these stream corridors are really important obviously for uh, a lot of uh, terrestrial animals as well. <clears throat> So, what is water sensitive design? It's um, management of fresh water that protects and enhances the values and functions of natural ecosystems. Uh, addresses stormwater effects uh, uh, as close as possible to the source. And it mimics natural systems and processes for stormwater management. Uh, really, really powerful and I think um, all of you should hold our councils to account on, on these words as we manage our, our streams. <laughs> Um, Land Development Manual is, is on our websites and I really um, <clears throat> I encourage you to look at it if you're into management of streams. Now this stream is up in um, suburban St. Um, <clears throat> uh, It's uh, I put it up here just as a reminder of the importance of some of the features of stream habitat that we need to be cognizant of. Because a lot of these, or some of these aspects in the urban environment are thought of as, as undesirable, messy. You know, these messy, pesky logs and um, debris that's lying around and it's, it's uh, all going all over the place, it's higgledy-piggledy. Um, but that is a, such important cover, the fish to, to live underneath um, these logs. Woody debris is fundamental. <laughs> It's got a natural variety of other substrates, from gravels, sand, um, through larger cobbles. It's got um, overhanging tree cover. We know that our, a lot of our native fish are getting much of their food supply from the rain from, from uh, trees above the water. We need that, uh, those plants in our urban streams to um, cover the water as well. <clears throat> There's lots of variety of depth and width. We've got deeper pools and shallow riffles and et cetera, et cetera. The key word is diversity. We've got real diverse habitat there. Mm. Uh, these are relatively recent examples, so 2008, 2013. Um, these have uh, been completely rock lined and uh, pretty straight. Um, the reason is that they, don't, they weren't allowed space in the uh, development plans, uh, get more houses into these landscapes. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, more examples. This is um, a tributary of Bolt Creek near uh, the corner of um, Hearts Road and Hill Street. Again, rock lined. There's some um, really good uh, patches of, of um, bush that this stream runs through just downstream. And um, uh, it would have been great to have mimicked what was happening down there. Yes, we have some problems with stormwater quantity with more impervious surface, um, but we can take some of those ideas. Um, uh, and uh, Alistair's going to talk about how we are constrained, and I'm not saying that we, we um, don't have to have some rock, but um, it is um, overused in my opinion. This is um, allowing a little bit more room in the corridor. This is Arizona Creek near Patterns Road. Uh, this was taken only a few uh, days ago or a week ago. Um, we've got uh, a walkway alongside. A lot of these um, are really good um, uh, recreation corridors. But we've got uh, um, a very even um, cross section of that channel. Uh, we've got, um, while there is a curve here, it's a meander, um, the uh, low flow channel is reasonably, effectively straight because it's such a long radius curve. We've got the trees so far away from the water, they're not useful, even when they're mature, uh, unlikely to uh, cover uh, that uh, water. Mm. Uh, We've got um, uh, some streams that are starving, um, starving for gravel because we've got gravel traps at the top. And there, this is uh, the same site, um, just near Waimea College Corner um, between 2008 and 2019. It really appears to be down cutting. Now, there are other processes that are um, happening here. More impervious surface does uh, cause more energy, and we've been having some big floods. But uh, Putting gravel back into these systems is really important. Again, mimicking um, the natural processes. <clears throat> uh, here's an opportunity that we've taken. Uh, the first plans that I was uh, given to audit as part of um, uh, uh, the resource consent was for this outlet of Reservoir Creek under uh, Hill Street. I um, was just going to have a, um, a rock ramp. Uh, even depth all, all the way through. I said, well, actually this creek, Reservoir Creek, has got a real um, <coughs> limit of the number of pools, deep pools, uh, for particularly pelagic fish like uh, Inangar. Um, uh, it's an important habitat. So we, we said to us, and um, the, it also dissipates the energy of high flows that come out of that pipe and um, causes some good habitat of, um, of eddies and, and overhanging um, trees and, and flats and so forth. And so we created this great structure, yeah, with a bit of rock, um, and then it, it flows out along there. So opportunity taken. There's another opportunity taken. This is further down Reservoir Creek, just upstream of Salisbury Road. Um, again, the um, some of the the, the, way, so the plans that came through as resource consent was to um, the main objective was to uh, there's all of this erosion here, and it was threatening a, a walkway above here. It was getting undermined. Yes, we needed to shore that up, of course. Um, but uh, the solution was initially rocking down there, right across and up the other side, and making it a very even depth right through the, the, um, the, the length of, of this. But this was one of the last pools, and particularly one of the last pools that was, um, was a lovely big totara tree here, um, overhanging. We've got all of this um, undercut bank here with, with um, shaggy roots ha hanging over. It was really, really good habitat um, for our native fish. So um, we, we worked together, and uh, I think we're all coming at it from different perspectives. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against um, <laughs> Alistair and I, I think we work together reasonably well. But we, we, we jostle, because we're coming at it from different backgrounds. And um, yeah, Alistair will <laughs> put me up on things la later on if I've um, I overstepped it. But um, <laughs> this, is, this is what's ha happened. We've just put some rock to shore up that... Um, that walkway from um, getting undermined, but we've retained um, almost a metre of, of depth in that pool. Uh, it did go uh, um, right under the pool, but we kept that depth, we've kept this bank intact, and the totara tree with all its overhanging roots as well, which is um, uh, yeah, really good outcome. Uh, this is another, uh, <clears throat> I think, a, one of the projects that our, our council can be most proud of, and, and Alistair's going to go into it a little bit more detail. Back in 2009, it was a dead straight channel. This is down near Hidini Lane, uh, off Lower Queen Street. And um, we, uh, 
it needed um, greater stormwater capacity with all the urbanization upstream, uh, and we created a meandering channel. But we got um, a whole lot of other habitat features in here. You can see here these wetlands created um, as part of this corridor as well. So we had connection of the stream with its floodplain. Uh, this is something that um, we have got a real disconnect with generally when we're designing and, and uh, modifying our waterways. We've got a variety of, of um, meander uh, radius. Um, and so uh, we put in clean substrate, uh, this, uh, we put in woody debris um, into that system so we've got instant cover for fish and, uh, and of course the riparian plantings. This is what it looks at now, it looks like now these plants are growing up, a lot of them over our head height in this area downstream of uh, Lower Queen Street. That's the estuary in the background and um, uh, the Westmount College there. <clears throat> So yeah, this is um, what it looked like soon after cutting. Um, we raised some banks um, here with, with plantings. This is not quite complete, so we did have some variety of bank shape. You can see um, all the, the woody debris that was installed in here. Uh, and um, yeah, we've got a good depth for variety. We've got these um, the riffles in here and in, the, in deeper areas and pools. That's what it looks like uh, now. So it's growing up and we've got, um, going to get in and plant some of the um, areas with, with taller trees, podocarps as well. Some of these areas are, that are covered in algae and even some um, uh, oxygen weed and others are now um, becoming um, nice clean cobbles again. Okay, um, this is a bit hard to see, but go onto our website and look at catchment management plans. And uh, there's a really good story maps there that really goes into detail scoring um, our waterways in uh, Richmond for their habitat. Mm. Uh, uh, just to quickly show that our urban streams, these are urban streams, and, and, our, and this is the macroinvertebrate community index, a much more uh, poor condition. And in Tasman, there are our urban streams on this side. That's the same indices, maximum vertebrate community index, uh, well below this 80 mark, which is the new bottom line. Um, so um, why is it? Sometimes because they're overheating. Some of that's due to um, ponds. Won't go into the data there, but it's, uh, it's real. They're overheating. Stormwater pipes that are coming out into these um, streams. This is like just been built uh, into Arizona Creek. It's still, still happening, no treatment. Um, this is a stormwater pipe uh, on Reservoir Creek, just near um, Salisbury Road, downstream of Salisbury Road. Uh, this is a discharge that's been happening for the last um, five or six years, highly concentrated chlorine. We just found it just um, a month ago or so um, from a pool from a, a local school. Unfortunately, and here's a, a dead eel. There have been a number of um, fish killed. So um, this is real. Our stormwater um, is vulnerable to all of these discharges, and um, we can take opportunities to treat it. And showing some data of the invertebrate community index at that site is, is quite depressed. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over this. Um, uh, there's a subdivision where, uh, where all the water was coming down into the stream here. Um, there were lots of talk about how we could put in a treatment wetland for that stormwater. Um, unfortunately, that was not successful because of um, maintenance costs. And now that pipe goes straight in here. And um, yeah, that's only a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so in conclusion then, um, we need space for our streams. We are spacing it out on certain things and we are giving it space in some other areas, so there's is the good and the bad, but space is a really important thing uh, and it's important for our terrestrial um, species as well. We need stormwater treatment prior to discharge <coughs> and our land development manual um, is a bit quiet on that, but it, um, it had, uh, nevertheless, this water sensitive design is in there and there's all sorts of other things that we could do. So uh, thank you very much and I'll hand on to Alice.